Welcome to a lesson on big omega notation. Asymptotic notation is used to express and compare the growth rate of functions. In our case, the functions will typically represent the running time of algorithms. We will define the asymptotic notations in terms of non-negative functions since the running time of an algorithm is always non-negative. We will focus on the notations most commonly used in the analysis of algorithms, which are big O notation, big omega notation, and big theta notation. This lesson will focus only on big omega notation. Asymptotic notation allows us to express the behavior of a function as the input approaches infinity. In other words, it is concerned about what happens to f of n as n gets larger and is not concerned about the value of f of n for small values of n. And now let's talk about big omega notation. Recall from the last lesson, big O notation is used to express the idea that one function is an upper bound for another function. Big omega notation allows us to express the opposite idea that one function is a lower bound for another function. Before we look at the formal definition, let's take a look at the graph. Let's say we are given this upper function f of n, and c times g of n is some function that's always less than or equal to f of n when n is greater than or equal to n sub zero. We can say f of n is bounded below by c times g of n, or c times g of n is a lower bound of f of n. And now looking at the formal definition, let f and g be non-negative functions. We say that f of n is big omega of g of n, written as f of n equals big omega of g of n, if and only if there are positive constants c and n sub zero such that c times g of n, this lower function, is less than or equal to f of n, this upper function, for all n greater than or equal to n sub zero. If f of n is big omega of g of n, f of n grows no slower than g of n. In other words, g of n is an asymptotic lower bound, or just a lower bound on f of n. Again, hopefully this makes sense by analyzing the graph on the right. And now let's take a look at a proof. Let's prove that n cubed plus four n squared is big omega of n squared. Here we have f of n equals n cubed plus four n squared, and g of n equals n squared. We should be able to recognize that for n greater than or equal to one, n squared is less than or equal to n cubed, which is less than or equal to n cubed plus four n squared. Notice when n equals one, n squared equals n cubed, which is less than n cubed plus four n squared. And when n is greater than one, n squared is less than n cubed, which is less than n cubed plus four n squared. If you're not convinced, you may wanna try some different values of n just to verify this inequality. From this inequality, it follows that one n squared is less than or equal to n cubed plus four n squared for n greater than or equal to one. Which indicates n cubed plus four n squared is equal to big omega of n squared by definition of big omega with n sub zero equal to one and c equal to one because we're using one n squared here on the left. Let's look at this graphically. In red, we have the graph of f of n equals n cubed plus four n squared. In blue, we have the graph of c times g of n, which is a function one n squared. The graph does verify that c times g of n, or one n squared, is less than or equal to f of n, which is n cubed plus four n squared, for n greater than or equal to one. We could have actually used the value for n sub zero less than one, but remember, we're using big omega notation to describe the behavior of f of n as n approaches infinity. We can also state that f of n grows no slower than g of n, and g of n is an asymptotic lower bound on f of n. I hope you found this helpful.